Hi everyone, my name is Alex, I'm an engineer and my passion is with design, development and prototype production of all sorts of engineering solutions. In this video I would like to walk you through the method which I could come up with to test the accuracy of angular division of this particular dividing head here. And this dividing head is a Valta UTA 100E. The UTA, I don't know what this abbreviation means. 100 means 100 mm spindle height above the base. And the E means externally driven, which is an option that can be used for machining spirals. I like this dividing head very much because it's very, very versatile. Actually, it allows you to do conventional 5-axis machining on a mill such as this one. And I even think I use this dividing head more frequently than my machinist vise on this machine. What makes this dividing head so versatile is the fact that you can not only use it with the spindle in a horizontal position, but you can tilt it upward and lock it in any intermediate position. Also it allows you to index in a direct manner with this disc here and 24 equally spaced positions around the circumference. Or you can do indirect indexing with the aid of this crank and the indirect indexing disc here. This dividing head usually came with, I think, three indirect indexing discs, which allowed you to choose from a vast variety of division angles. I bought this dividing head in a used condition from an old man and ever since then I wondered how good the accuracy of angular division on this piece of gear would be. I never had a chance to test the division accuracy because I didn't have a standard to do this with. But the other day I could come up with a solution for testing this with a piece of gear that I have. But now enough blabber and let's take a look. Alright, first thing we need to do here is to mount this instrument leveling holder, which is called a Tribrach. To do this I made this adapter here from 5.8 UNC to some M12 all thread. The adapter piece has a turned male thread with tight tolerance to provide at least some kind of centrability on the adapter's outer diameter. Then here in the jug is held a centering bushing to accept the adapter. I'll reset the camera in a second. To tighten this arrangement I made this low profile flange nut here which does not protrude much and so is able to slip into the base when the dividing head is tilted upward. Here you can see how the adapter sits in the chucked centering bushing. This arrangement has some axial movement so that we can tighten the Tribrach with its feet onto the jaws of the three jaw chuck. And tightening the flange nut. That's it. Next we have to tilt the spindle upward so that I don't have to risk a broken back when I work the instrument. The set angle is not critical for this test, we just want it to be roughly vertical. There are three spots on the Tribrach on which the instrument sits. One of them can be seen here. We need to have those spots perpendicular with the axis of rotation of the dividing head, which is easily adjusted with the set screws of the Tribrach. I pre-leveled this before this shot, but let's check if this is okay. First spot. Second spot. And the third one. 
So we should be good. Now comes the interesting part. This instrument here is a 1966 Swiss-made Wild Herbrug T2 Theodolite with arc second accuracy. Actually it's a T21 out of the family of the T2s. Believe it or not, roughly 90,000 theodolites of this family were produced between 1926 and 1996 and they were used all over the world. That's 70 years of production. And the design changes over these years, they were only minor to my best knowledge. In my opinion, this instrument marks one of the peaks of the art of mechanical instrument making. It's just incredible how well everything on this instrument is designed and made. Everything's made out of metal or glass. I was lucky and got a chance to buy this unit in an almost unused condition, with only a few necessary minor repairs and missing pieces. Nailed it! Sorry, back to the test. In order not to bore you to death, I only want to show you testing of the direct indexing disc. So first we index on our 0 or 24 position and lock the spindle. Now we have to find a suitable target. Through the dirty workshop window of course, far away but clearly visible. Freehand we must roughly find it, which is not easy because of the large magnification of this instrument. Then we lock the frictions onto the fine adjusters and guide the crosshair into the target. You may be wondering what it is that I'm using as a target, don't you? <laughs> well, through my shop window from this angle I don't see a summit cross or church tower. So I used a mountain farmer's window. No peeping tom business going on here, give me a break. This shot is before lunch, so you can already see the air shimmering at this magnification because of the heat. And in case you wonder how far away this is, the arrow here shows you that far. Sorry, zooming into the video frame doesn't help a lot here. Anyway, back to the measurement, for which we will be using the right eyepiece here. But first, we must shine some light onto the horizontal circle in order to be able to read it. This can be done through this orifice with the daylight mirror here. But for filming I used a pen light. As this is our first index we set zero here, which is done with the aid of the guarded thumb screw at the base. But also the optical micrometer on top must be zeroed. Here is how this looks through the eyepiece. Not for zero angle though, this is more of a general reading example. You see three scales, of which the center one shows our angle to be red in the unit Gon, a meanwhile outdated unit for angles. 400 Gons equals 360 degrees, simple as that. So our angle is 217.4 and something. Now how do we read the something? This is what the upper and lower scales are good for. The lower one is the optical micrometer. What you do is, you turn the micrometer until upper and middle scales perfectly coincide. Like now. Then our reading is from the middle dial 217.4 plus we must add the micrometer reading divided by 1000. So we get 217.4414. That's reading four Gon decimal positions, yes, which is roughly half an arc second. And tell me, if this is not elegant to read, then what is? And keep in mind, this is a purely mechanical instrument. Okay, after noting the reading, we do the following. We measure the same angle, but in the inverted position, like you see here. 
This allows to compensate for some errors of the instrument, but more about this in a minute. Again, freehanding the target, locking onto the fine adjusters, and fine adjusting. Look at this, there is no backlash whatsoever in this instrument. Everything is just silky smooth and this after 50 years. Ah, a little fog came up, but that's no drama. Imagine carrying the surveying equipment a few thousand meters in elevation to the summit where the stone markers usually are <laughs> and then fog came up. My father can tell you stories about this line of work in the Alps, which he did in the 1970s. Adventurous stories, let me tell you. And resetting the focus a little bit. Next, we read the inverted angle and note it. Then, of course, we set the dividing head to the next index. Read standard and inverted angles and so on. So here are the condensed results of this test of the direct indexing disc. That is for 45 degree increments. What's given in this column here are the individual index numbers which are etched onto the direct indexing disc. But essentially we step over 45 degrees, 45 and so on. And if this is zero then we go, come back to zero again in this line here. In this column you find our readings, standard and inverted that is. Out of these values I've pre-camera computed the results. Here in this column for example are the mean angles. Computing the mean value out of standard and inverted angles is standard surveying procedure and allows to compensate for errors which the instrument may have. If we subtract standard from inverted reading, we get an impression of these errors as shown in this column here. What we find here is a quite constant difference between standard and inverted angles, which most probably are caused by the micrometer setting. Anyway, what we were interested in is the indexing error. So the values in this column here are simply the difference between set angle and our theodolite reading here in arc seconds. What's interesting to note here are these two values, this one here and this one here. Both are readings from the same index position, 0 or 24, whatever you prefer. And these two values show us how consistent direct indexing on this dividing head is we find roughly 25 arc seconds of difference here in the consistency, which in my opinion is surprisingly good if you consider that single indexing pin. Before we discuss the maximum error though, we must find our relative zero position first. You see, here I did set our absolute zero. But this is rather arbitrary, so errors are usually measured from a mean position. This is more e easy to understand from this diagram here. So let this line here represent absolute zero or set zero. I've plotted our results in relation to this line. For example, plus 13, plus 11, plus 91 and so on. Then this line here is our relative or mean zero, which is 26 arc seconds shifted from our imperfectly set zero. So this makes our largest errors plus 65 and minus 49 arc seconds respectively. All in all, I'm very satisfied with this result, or to quote my friend Stefan Gotteswinter, not too shabby. He hopefully will approve of these results, fingers crossed.
Well guys, as always, I hope you find the one or the other thing in this video useful. Thanks for watching, I appreciate your time. All the best and thank you!